So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, I'm Stevie. This is the second podcast I've done. Um, I started in the industry in 1983 with British Gas as an apprentice. I uh, worked there for 36 years, left British Gas in 2019, and then worked in a training centre, gas training centre, for about 18 months. And I've now worked with Gas Safe Register for the last three years, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. And over to yourself, Noel. Thanks very much, Stevie. Yeah, uh, my name's Dale Clayton. Again, I started in the gas industry in uh, 1977 as an apprentice. Um, I left in 1992 and uh, I actually started my own business. Um, from then on, I was headhunted to join Corgi, which I did do in 1992. And uh, of course, I was too big across in 2009 to Gas Safe Register and uh, currently working as a technical support officer, which um, I have to say, I really enjoy it. Good, good. Thanks, Noel. So today we're going to talk about commercial pipe work. Um, obviously, on the technical helpline, we get lots of common questions. So the kind of, kind of common questions we get uh, on commercial pipe work, we've got Noel, who's written a, an article in the Engineer magazine recently. So who better to answer our most common questions uh, than Noel, who's got a, a vast experience in the commercial industry? So first of all, no. one of the common questions we get is, is it is it an automatic isolation valve always required in a plant room? Yeah, thanks for that, Stevie. And I, yeah, I've got to be honest with you. I do find there's um, there's quite a lot of misconception in relation to that. I mean, lots of guys are phoning me up saying, oh, I must fit an automatic uh, isolation valve. In reality, fitting of an um, what we call a manual isolation valve if it's at point of exit, if you can gain, uh, if you can gain, if it's readily accessible, for instance, it would deem to be acceptable. Now, the problem is, and we all know this from other situations, I've seen boiler installations where the manual isolation valve is directly behind the boilers. Well, I wouldn't call that readily accessible, and I wouldn't like to try and get that if you've got an issue with the gas coming out, which is ignited from a boiler. So, yeah. of course, then you would need to have that a lot uh, in a lot more safer position. So, um, yeah, I mean, when you start talking about the potential of um, insurance purposes, now, a lot of those would actually ask for gas or smoke detection. And um, it's quite important that that is complied with. Um, in many, uh, many, many installations, also the use of an what we call an automatic isolation valve um, may be required with um, you've got things like uh, commercial catering that will give you for one instance sometimes it would also work uh, very well in things like science labs where an automatic isolation valve may be required normally that would be sited next to where the tutor sits so in the event of any issue you can knock the button and slam shut it so yeah uh, so where appliances um, are not fitted with say flame safeguards for instance um, an ARV system be designed to block in the event of closure of the gas valve restoration of the gas supply well that basically means if you think about it oh so I've got to turn off all downstream pilots or valves before I can re-establish the gas supply and that makes perfect sense in that particular scenario because uh, it ensures that you won't be reinstating the gas supply and you've got a leak at the other end. So it's very important that the pressure proofing device in that situation will do the job. Perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the manual isolation valves must be accessible. Um, but uh, apart from that, it's not always um, an automatic isolation valve is not always required, but there, there, there definitely can be. Um, mm. Very, very, very useful. Another common question we get now is um, what jointing methods are required on commercial pipe work? Oh, yes. Certainly is a question to get quite a lot, um, to be fair, Stevie. Um, one of the big issues that we've had is um, where, and I've had this fairly recently, where somebody's gone in and um, and it, the system you've got is, you know, three inch, 75 mil cut and threaded. And in the days, you know, with the old standards, you could actually uh, cut and thread up to about 100 mil. That's four inch in the old days. Of course, that was changed with the introduction of uh, IGUP2 edition three, because what it said in there, and I'm sure we've had this time and time again, is 
as soon as you start going over 50 mil, you're going to have to weld it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, there's loads of installations out there, Stevie, where, you know, they are cut and threaded. And we've got a lot of engineers that phone us up and say, oh, my God, what do I do? Do I have to rip all of the old pipe work out and it's all got to be welded? And I explained to them, that actually, within IGUP2, it does give you an understanding that you can come off of one threaded fitting. Yeah. So, yes, I know it's threaded, but you're allowed to come off of that threaded fitting as long as the rest of the pipework will comply to IGUP2, which is, yeah. of course, over 50 mil, it would all need to be welded. Um, the only other thing that comes into um, uh, the situation is pressures as well. Yeah, because pressures can be a, a, a real problem because, you know, i.e. somebody phoned me up the other day and he said, well, it's all right. I, you know, you don't need welding. It's under 25 mil. So I said, yeah, but what pressure you got? He said, um, oh, well, you know, it's um, this one is uh, in excess of um, uh, 500 millibars. Yeah. And I said, right, okay, yeah. And this is where the issue starts then. And in fact, even on that side pipe work, um, as soon as you start going, for instance, in excess of five bar, I'll give you, even though it's less than 25 mil, that's got to be welded. Still, yeah, still it, welded. It's really to do with the pressure, and that's you can understand that. And yeah. uh, as I always used to say, we used to weld. Personally, I'd weld anything over 50 mil before it even happened. Why? You try and get a decent joint out of 100 mil. You're cutting the thread in it. Yeah, it doesn't matter what compounds you use. I'm yeah. going to be honest with you. Here. You know, you would occasionally have a problem. And it also dependent on how good your stocks and dies were, yeah. were really as to how good that joint would be. You know, you and, put your threaded yeah. fiddle on, there's a bit of a rattle in there. And, of yeah. course, you know that's uh, certainly and, going to be a problem when you yeah. strength test it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to line it up, line it up to, to, to get it tight. To line up and it ends absolutely, up absolutely, until Stevie. No, yeah. you're um, you're bang on with that. So that is quite important. I mean, don't forget me wrong. I mean, I've done a little bit of PE. Well, I wouldn't. I, I never did, really did an awful lot of PE pipe work. Uh, but PE pipe work, you know, is non-metallic. It's very important that that's got to be used outside and underground. Yeah. Um, yes. And I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't seen MDPE entering the building. You know, and somebody said, "Oh well, I put a." plastic sheath around it etc and i realized that you can put mdp into a building i said well when when can you put an mdp into a building then oh well i know you know they outside in the road i saw them doing that i said oh do you mean doing an insertion so it's sleeved throughout its entire yeah. length within a metallic sleeve. sleeve which is capable of conveying the gas so i see it's, it's in a metallic sleeve which is acceptable most days, and when I was doing work, I've got to be honest, I used to use what I call an old hockey stick. Yeah, hockey stick, yeah, MDP yeah, hockey up, stick it's in a GRP sleeve, yeah. and then obviously house entry T, and then sleeve with the wall in steel. So that was the, the best possible scenario, uh, scenario for me. Copper, I mean, we all love copper. I'm still a lover of copper. I know I'm a bit old school on that one. I'm not really uh, one of those guys that love all this uh, plastic pipe work, but uh, it's fit for purpose. It does its job. Yeah. But copper, it's got to be correctly jointed under normal conditions and uh, should not leak throughout its lifetime. However, local environment, mechanical damage can really have an impact on that and uh, interference as well, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, yeah, joints should be accessible positions and um, joints should not be located in sleeves we get an awful lot of that where people have picked up there's a joint in the sleeve other than those that are welded or brazed uh, and joints shall not be located such that air movement uh, uh, so that uh, air movement sh will dilute minor leakage and i've got to say you know somebody said to me about ventilation uh, it wouldn't necessarily cope with a catastrophic failure which a lot of people believe it would um, a non-metallic pipe it must not be used within the building except for entry, so uh, that covers that. The other one, what I suppose is very popular, and it is because I get a lot of questions about uh, this, is, is um, um, what we call press fittings. And they are very popular, as I say, I've seen uh, quite a few different types being used yeah. now. And uh, loads of engineers phone me up and how can I use it and details about press fittings. But there is limitations to their use, yeah. to be fair. I mean, you've got um, uh, maximum pipe diameter of 108 millimetres. Yeah. 
maximum size yeah. and certainly operating pressure not exceeding five bar. Yeah. yeah. The other uh, one, yeah. which is... Sorry, Steve, yeah. So I was going to say, again, pre press fit should all, always be used per manufacturer's instructions. Very okay. much so. And you yeah. can see these. I like these. I like the new ones now. There's no arguments of whether it's fit for purpose. Uh, one I looked at the other day, just doing a little bit of research for the guy, and quite clearly you can see it's got a yellow, um, a primrose yellow square on top, which would denote that as being fit for purpose for natural gas. And I always get, you know, get, uh, tell guys to double check with that as well to ensure it is fit for purpose. Um, the other one, which I've, I've got to be honest, I've, I think it's pretty good stuff, is, and I'm sure you've heard of it, is um, uh, pliable corrugated stainless steel pipework or CSST. And um, I tend to find that that is very popular for unrelated ducts or voids because some of them have internal and external uh, coating. So yeah. pretty good for putting in unventilated ducts yeah. or voids. Um, but the important part of it is uh, that uh, CSTT and pliable corrugated P uh, PCT um, operating pressure is limited to um, 75 millibars. Um, but um, uh, as I say, it, um, when it comes to PC, uh, P, PCT, uh, that can actually go up to 500 millibars. So there's quite a difference between the two. Uh, and PCT um, uh, is um, pliable cor corrugated tubing, Chewing. as opposed to CSST, which is corrugated stainless steel. And again, I'm finding that's quite popular. Um, and yeah, as always, pressure limitations uh, will apply with the respective fittings as well as. Yeah, so th thanks for that, No, Some good information there. And and kind of final question for the day is, we get quite asked quite a lot, is what are the requirements for pipes in a protected area? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Thanks for that, Stevie. Um, I get quite a few calls myself, to be honest with you. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of concern out there. Um, what it really says is that pipe work must not uh, pass through a protected area. Um, containing, this could be a stair, it could yep. be a lift, and of course, um, reference to building regulations is also very important with that as well. Um, unless all of the following conditions are actually met, so the following conditions are operation pressure, don't exceed 75 millibars, uh, pipe work, including fittings, it is of carbon or stainless steel. Um, any joint is either threaded screwed or welded and pliable corrugated stainless steel tube uh, is of a continuous length uh, without joints uh, manufactured to withstand a fire uh, a fire okay. test um, the other side of it is uh, and i explain this to people pipe work must not be installed in an unventilated space and shall not be installed in an unventilated duct void or enclosure and again really this is all to do with build up a gas and um, and as a, a as a always an added point to that you know i always explain that pipe work must not be installed within a cavity wall neither shall it pass through a cavity wall except by its shortest possible route which is from one side of the wall to the other yeah lovely Thanks for that, Noel. Uh, some lots of good information there. O obviously, the the one thing it's all it's all to do with fire regulations, and you want to make sure there's no soldered fittings in in that area. Um, yeah, it's it's help. very true, yeah. uh, Stevie. Because I've got to be honest with you, when you think about if that happens to be your only point of, you know, exit, exit, yeah. you certainly uh, you want to be able to get there in a a pretty quick. And uh, things like uh, gas supplies and things like that make the risk assessment so much higher doesn't it and that's the big yeah. issue with um lobbies and protected areas very much so yeah, yeah. lovely thanks no so just just another news um pretty standard 5440 parts one and parts two for domestic flowing and ventilation have uh, recently been updated and released uh, there will shortly be an industry standard update which will cover the the changes from the old documents to the new documents. So there's a few changes in there. So it'd be good to see the, the, the industry standard update when it comes out, which will uh, condense the changes. And also Gas Safe Register, um, just to let the, the viewers know, we've got a document subscription available, which is really useful for all registered businesses. 
um, up to 10 registered engineers, which gives access to all the relevant British standards and IGM documents. So there is a, a small fee for this service, but it's very, very worthwhile if anyone wants to access the, the standards. And finally, we're asked to, to talk about the Gas Safe Registered are now offering a virtual inspection. So these come in two forms. They can either have a, a virtual inspection um, or a group inspection instead of the on-site inspections, which we've had for very many, many years. And give you a wee bit more detail on these. The virtual inspections can be completed um, from the comfort of your own home via a video link. And this consists of 30 multi-choice questions on unsafe gas situations. Um, you need to get at least 24 correct out of the 30 questions to pass. And it would recommend that you use the IGM G11 unsafe situations document. So basically read the questions carefully and find the scenario in the IGM G11 um, unsafe situations table one, and that will um, advise you if it's, uh, if it's at risk or ID or riddle reportable in some cases. The group events are held at local sites around the country. and These can accommodate up to 50 registered engineers at a time. Again, it consists of answering the same multi-choice questions on unsafe gas situations and that the same pass mark applies. Yeah, I think so it's again, good for innovation, yeah. Stevie, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we don't have to come do our face-to-face -face inspections. I think being innovative in the way that we do inspection, either, you know, it can be quite useful for a lot of guys and um, very much risk-based. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a really positive step forward, actually. Yeah, I think we're just making making the use of modern technology. And I think it, it, it's probably, hopefully, it's less impact on registered engineers potentially having to take a, a whole day off um, running a couple points, of jobs, Stevie. yeah. So hopefully it makes life easier. Again, if it's if the technology side of it puts people off, they can request the the face to face inspection with a local inspector. So it's not yeah, it's not uh, mandatory that they need to take these. They can use the old face to face option as well. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this podcast. If uh, anyone has any feedback or suggestions or topics that you'd like us to cover in the future episodes, please email us on technical at gas safe register all the one word dot co dot uk if you have any technical queries you can send us an email at that email address or you can call the technical helpline team again thanks for taking the time to watch this podcast thank you yeah thank you very much bye-bye bye-bye